And it came to pass when he was when when he was in a certain city, behold, a man full of leprosy. Everybody say leprosy. leprosy. Was seeing Jesus. I'm sorry, who leprosy, who who seeing Jesus fell on his face and besought him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou can make me clean. Mm -hmm. And he put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will be thou clean. And immediately, everybody say immediately. immediately. The leprosy departed from him and he charged him, tell no man, but go and show thyself to the priest and offer for thy cleansing according as Moses commanded for a testimony unto them. Everybody say, but. but. But so much the more went there a fame abroad of him and great multitudes, everybody say great multitudes, great multitudes, came together to hear and to be healed by him of all their infirmities. I want to I want to use the same topic that I used Tuesday night at Bible study. The topic is how deep is your love? Amen. How deep is your love? You may be seated. How deep is your love? Now, something just grabbed me in the spirit in verse 13. Now, as as it were, this story goes, this young man has leprosy. Uh, you have to do a study on leprosy. I taught on this before. Anybody that had leprosy, they had their own little, their, their own towns, their own cities. They didn't live among the general population because leprosy was a disease that was um, uh, very devastating because basically it ate away your, your extremities. It ate away your, your people. They would lose their fingers. They would lose their noses. Um, it was a, I don't know, medically what it would be called or what they've likened, to, likened it to in this day and age. But, but leprosy was a disease that, that they didn't know what it was. So basically, whenever they had a, um, any kind of serious disease like that, they would have a place where they kept or they isolated certain people from the general populace because they didn't want everybody to be infected with that disease. So this young man was taking a risk by coming near where Jesus was. But how many of y'all know when, when, when you are desperate, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you do what you got to do. Amen. You know, lock me up, throw me in jail, but I'm tired of dealing with this situation and I'll take whatever risk I need to take to be healed by God. So, so this young man fell at Jesus' feet and this is what just leaped in my spirit the Bible says, he asked Jesus, would you make me clean? Would you heal me? And of course, Jesus, being the loving God that he is, he said, yes, I will. But the Bible said something here in first thir verse 13 that really leaped in my spirit is immediately. Now, now, I don't know who you are, but God said he was about to do something immediate in your life. I don't know who you are. I don't know. I don't know who I'm talking to. But just know that I just heard in the spirit, whatever you've been looking for that's been on hold, God said immediately. Now, if we were going to preach another message, today, we would say and suddenly. Mm -hmm. But immediately or as the as the 16th century English would say straightway, God said he's about to release something in your life immediately. I don't know who you are. Just receive that immediately God is going to change something that has been on hold that you've been waiting for. God said, immediately I'm going to change it. I'm going to turn it around. It's going to be like this young man. You're going to get it now. It's no more waiting. He said, the wait is over. So whoever, whoever I'm talking to, your baby's leaping just like mine did. Because he said, immediately, I'm going to turn it around. It's been a problem. It's been a distraction. It's been a hindrance. But God said, now, as of right now, it's going to turn. As a matter of fact, it's already turning as I'm talking. So whoever that's for, he said, immediately, it's coming. And when you get out of here, you're going to see an immediate change. You're going to see, it's no more wait. The wait is over immediately. So with that being said, this young man gets healed and he goes 
to the priest. Jesus said, go show yourself to the priest. Because back then, during that time, whenever you had a sickness, uh, they didn't go to the doctor per se initially because everything was governed by the church. They had to go verify. The priest had to verify that you had a certain disease. And it was noted and it was documented that you were sick with this thing. So Jesus said, since you got healed immediately, go tell the priest, go show yourself to the ones who need to verify that you were sick, but now you're well. Now, see, that, that goes without saying as well. See, you can't argue with results. If I've been dealing with something, now all of a sudden what I had is no longer there. See, then that's where God gets all the glory. And people can't deny the fact that you were, but now you're something different. And see, that's why, people, you got to understand we're still operating in the year of new beginnings. You have to keep your faith to a place where you believe in God for new things to happen so that we can show the world how great our God is. Don't just sit back because it's summertime and focus on vacation and forget to trust God even while you're on vacation. We still need to show the world that our God is good and they can't deny results. You don't need to have sicknesses and things in your body and you just saying, oh, well, whatever. No, you need to pray that God heals you so that when you go back to the doctor, the doctor can say, well, yeah, you were dealing with that, but it's gone. I can't find anything. I can't I can't find anything. We still need to verify. We need to still show people that our God is great, that our God is a healer, that our God is a provider, our God is a way maker, that our God is able to change situations and things that we deal with on a regular basis. So therefore, you can't trust in yourself, but you have to trust in our God. We have a responsibility as believers to trust in the Lord with all of our heart. Psalms 3, I mean, Proverbs 3 and 5. And lean not to our own understanding, but in all our ways acknowledge him so he can keep directing your path. I don't care what it, see, see, a lot of times what happens, uh, you know, <clears throat> when God doesn't move right away, we get discouraged. Am I right about it? We get discouraged. We think, you know, because we, see, and I keep saying this, I've said this many times, God is not a microwave. He's not a mic. Okay, let me let me let me help some of the 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 uh, no no young kids in here, so we all know it. God is not Aladdin, <laughs> genie in the bottle. You just can't rub God's bottle and say, "Okay, Lord, I need you to you know I want." And see, and and you know what? Here here I hear this in the spirit because I'm, I'm this is somebody's heart. Uh, somebody's been frustrated because you think God has not heard you. God is not moved by your frustration. He's moved by your faith. I'm going to talk about some things a little. Yeah, OK, I can say it now. I'm going to talk about two of my points I'm going to be dealing with. But the last point and a second point I'm going to be dealing with is gratitude. Mm-hmm. See, A lot of times we think that God is supposed to do what you say when you say it. Instead of you just being grateful for him in his process working on you. Mm-hmm. You don't have a right to get upset because God doesn't pay your bills today. Oh, I know. I just, I I feel it. I just went, whoop, stepped in something again. We get mad. We get an attitude. Well, well, God, why did such and Okay, let's go back. Let's, let's, let's have a, let's have a parent child conversation when we, you know, when we were children. Now, I don't know how y'all, maybe you all had parents who were, well, and I'm going to say my mother. Maybe you had a mom who was very loving and she spoke to you softly, and she would say, now, honey, okay, now let me break it down the way my mama did it. <laughs> let, me, let, me, let me take it back. My mom would say, first thing you need to do is correct your attitude. Amen. Fix your attitude, because you can't come to me asking me for something, and you got an attitude right off. So, so how dare we get upset with God and have an attitude because he didn't do what you think he should do when you thought he should do it. I believe somebody uh, before us who went through great agony, who went through great suffering and and great turmoil by the name of Job, tried to play that card with God and said, you know, God, why aren't you doing such and such? God said, stop. Where were you when I put the moon up on us? I hung him in the sky. Where were you when I put the star? Wait, you don't dictate to me what I'm going to do. I dictate to you what he's going to do. God said, look, wait, whoa, 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 stop that. You don't have a right to get an attitude when God 
doesn't move. I don't know who I'm talking to, but somebody's been frustrated and you mad at God. Well, your frustration and your anger is not going to move him. But when you correct your attitude, reel it in. See, see, cause, see I'm going back to my mama. See, that, you, you know what that was? You, you know? Huh? No, that was her grabbing me in the collar, act, acting me, asking me, are you crazy? <laughs> Talking to me, you know, that's, that's some, and you know, sometimes, God, see, you know what? And, and I had something recently, and I can't remember what it was, but God grabbed me in the collar, in the spirit, like, you know, see, see sometimes we get too comfortable with God. We get too, because, because you know, oh yeah, I'm going to say it. I mean, sometimes we float along in sin and don't nothing happen, so we think we can talk to God any kind of way, and especially when trouble comes. But then when he grabs you in the collar and reminds you that I am still the Lord, yes. uh -huh. we stop and say, oh, okay, yes, yes, sir. Because we need to understand that God is working us. He's working a plan for our life. He has a process that he has to take us through. And we don't have the right to be angry just because things don't go the way we think. Maybe you haven't been thinking right about your situation is the problem. Maybe that's the whole thing. Maybe you need to line. I don't know why this thing is acting a little crazy this morning. but Now, straight. Maybe you and maybe I need to make sure that we're lining our thoughts up with his thoughts and stop acting in such a way that we, we get in an attitude because things are not moving just the way that we think. God doesn't owe you anything. But he's going to give you everything when you walk by faith and you trust him. So, so let, me, let, me, let me just kind of go to my point. I don't know. Y'all pulling some stuff out of me today. I don't know who brought this up in here, but you're getting it. Whoever's been dealing with something, you've had some, some frustration about God. You've been angry. You've been upset in your heart. Not verbally saying a lot of stuff, but you've been worried about some stuff, and you mad because God is not doing what you think. Yet yeah, there it is. I'm going to say it. See, your problem is you're spending more time worrying about your trouble instead of putting your mind in the Word and thinking or hearing how He's thinking about your situation. See, that, that becomes the problem is your focus is on, well, I don't know why this ain't happening. And if all the Bible says, as a man thinketh, so is he. You're worrying about your... Now, let me ask you a, a quick question. Uh, Matthew chapter 6 talks about uh, worrying. It, takes, it says, take no thought for those things which you have need of, you know, what you're going to eat, what you're going to do. Why are you worrying about your situation changing versus saying, God, I thank you for changing my situation? We're focused on the wrong thing. Put your focus on what God, you know what? You're my God. You promised me that you were going to meet every need according to your riches and glory. God said, I'll move when I'm ready to move. But your attitude needs to be corrected first. And then he can move. How many, and I've said this many times before. I don't, I don't know who brought this in here, but y'all, you're getting it today. I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to give it. I'm here. See, again, I hear in the spirit. How many times do you give your kids good things when they've been acting up? How many parents reward their children for disobedience? I didn't get rewarded for disobedience. I didn't get... Okay, see, y'all taking me back. I got to go back to mama. Mama just preaching today. Thank you, mama. How many of y'all, like I was growing up, when, when your mother told you when you got in the car, don't ask me for nothing when you get in the store. And if I even thought about it and she saw a thought kind of look on my face, she would just correct me right there in the store. See, that was when my, I grew up with one of those mothers that didn't, she would anoint you and lay hands on you anywhere. You say, you know, I said she anointed, she would anoint you with her love. And help you scoop down the aisle while you in the store. You think it's the Holy Ghost, you know, and people, whoop, Jesus, yes, whoop, you walk, she's just tearing you up in the store. My mama said that I brought them in here and I did. But you know what? Those things, that helps me stay correct when I'm trusting God. I, you know what? That, see, again, nobody likes uh, correction. Nobody wants to be disciplined. But I thank God that I was because, see, now I don't have a right to act that way with God when I don't get my way. Because my mother taught me, no, 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 just wait. The Bible says, uh, what is it, uh, Psalms 41, it says, they that wait upon the Lord. 
I don't know. I don't know who you are, but you're having a problem with waiting. And that's why it's taking so long is because you got a problem with waiting. And when your problem goes away and you just give God thanks for the process, then it'll speed up. Oh, I know. I know. I know. I'm just I'm just speaking what's in the spirit that I'm hearing because somebody has been dealing with some things and your attitude is holding up the progress. Okay, let's get to the matter at hand. Is it a little warm in here? <laughs> Thank you, brother. Let's go, let's go. All of that came from immediately. Mm. So this young man had leprosy. He had to go show himself to the priest. But this is why we're here today. I got a few minutes and I'm going I'm to get to the point. Verse 15 is really what I, where I want to park. Is, is, it says, but so much the more went there a fame abroad of him, and great multitudes came together to hear and to be healed by him for their infirmities. So, so this is what I want to deal with today. This is really where what, what, what my assignment is. is. I want to talk about verse 15 because verse 15 deals with the multitudes that was following Jesus, those that were following him. And, and, and the thing that God really stirred in my spirit, see the, the last message or couple of messages that I preached was uh, what kind of love is this? And, and, and God has shown us, and I showed you in the scriptures, the kind of love that God has for us. God, he, he really loves us. He done, he's done so much to show us how much he loves us. But now today's message is, is how deep is your love? Because the thing that God wants us to understand is, coming out of verse 15 in particular, see, there were multitudes of people following him. And my question is, why were they following him? Because it's just like us. We come to church. We come to church. We know that God loves us and we know God cares for us. But, but, but why are we here? Are we here because we love him or are we here to get a good feeling? Now, because I go and we talked about this in Bible study. Y'all missed a great Bible study. It was phenomenal. Now, the Bible study focus was verse 15. Question, how deep is your love? Because as it said, the multitudes were following Jesus. And I asked the group, I said, why do we come to church? What's the reason why we're here? Are we here because we're after his love? Or we love him? Or we here because, see, you know, a lot of times when we come to church, we come to church for a good feeling. Because we've been into some stuff and, you know, we feel bad. How many, and you know what? And that's okay. That's good to come to the place where you should, you know, you go to the hospital to feel better, right? Well, this is a spiritual hospital. So if you've got some things you've been dealing with, this is the place you need to come. And it, you should always come to the house of God. So what I'm saying, I'm not trying to tell you to stay home. I'm trying to tell you to come. But I'm saying to come with the right motives. Because, see, God's going to judge us on our motives. God's going to judge us on why we did what we did. Uh, uh, but the thing that I want to deal with is the multitude. The multitude is following Jesus. Why are they following him? Now, it says here, verse 15, it says that so much the more there was a fame abroad of him and great multitudes came together to hear him, to be healed by him of their infirmities. So they came to hear what he had to say. And they came to be healed of their infirmities. Okay, that's all great. That's why Jesus, part of why Jesus came is to heal the sick, to give eternal life to those who didn't have it. But the thing about it is, see, and I was sharing this with somebody the other day. See, I taught you guys this. or the, Some of the new people have never heard me say this, but, but those who have been around have heard me say this. See, there's a difference between hearing and listening. See, the difference between hearing and listening is the Bible said they came to hear him. See, when you hear something, you, you recognize. I heard, what was that? You go. But when you listen, you recognize and understand what you heard. See the difference? I might hear somebody call my name and I go, oh, who was that? Somebody, you know, you could be in a large crowd and somebody could say, hey, Bob. All the Bobs would turn around and go like, who called me? But if they say it again, or a couple more times, especially as a person that I know, I'm going, I, I understood what I heard, and I know, okay, wait a minute, that's my wife, that's my sister. I know that I understand that that was somebody that knows me, and they want my attention. They're trying to get my attention. So these people came to hear and to be healed, 
But the thing about it is, my question is, did they just come because they wanted to hear something? Or did they come because they really loved and they desired God? And the thing that I, I asked the, the, the Bible study group, are we coming to church because we really want a serious relationship with God and we want it to grow? Or are we just coming because we're going through the motions? I'm going to let it marinate for a minute because I got the, God told me to deal with this again. I didn't know that I was going to go here on Sunday. He said Bible study, definitely. But see, a lot of times, and I, I love this. You know, I, Sister Tiffany taught me this, and I love, I use her cliche. Are we just coming to check the box? Now, I come to encourage you. I come, and so I don't, I'm not beating anybody up. But the thing I want you to understand is we have to check our hearts and we have to check our motives why we do things. See, because if you, it's, it's like, for example, if you're going to bless a homeless person and you're just doing it because you want somebody to see you bless a homeless person and you didn't give them something because you really wanted to bless them, keep your money. Okay, and what difference does it make if you're just doing it to be seen? The Pharisees and the Sadducees used to do that all the time. They would always try to do something to be seen of men. Some people like attention. And they get it any way they can. And see, you know what? Here, here we go. Here's a, here's a problem. A lot of times what happens, somebody will give a homeless person something. Now, I wasn't there when you did it, but you get around other people and brag about what you did to a homeless person. You did it just so you could tell somebody, I blessed somebody on the side of the road today. Same thing with church. Why are we coming? What's your motive? What? Are you here just to hear be healed, get a good feeling, or are you really desiring God? Because let me tell you something, God desires every single one of us. Amen. He desires more than just you checking the box, going through the motions, well, you know, this church is not for me. Okay, well, if it's not for you, go find one that is because you need to hear the word on a regular basis. The Bible says, how can they hear without a preacher? You need to understand it. You need to be somewhere where you're growing and not only growing, but that growth is pushing you to a deeper relationship with God. It can't be just a surface thing. It can't be just you coming on Sunday and just to get, you know, I, I'm doing good. Now, again, I don't want nobody to take this out of context and say, well, since that's me, I'm not going to come back. No, not what I'm saying. I'm saying when you come back or when you come, make sure your motives are right. Make sure you're not coming here just to hear the preacher, just to hear the preacher, but you're here because you want the, what the preacher says to push you to a closer relationship with God. Because trust me, if you call me at any hour of the night, or you call, well, don't call me at any hour. <laughs> Let's qualify that. Because after about 9.30 or 10 o'clock, my phone goes off. Amen. Don't, don't, don't think you can text me or call me, because you can't. See, I, it, when I was a young pastor, I used to leave my phone on all the time. I don't leave my phone on. You better call on God. Or you better call one of the other leaders. Cause, you know, don't call, cause, cause Rick White going to bed. I need, I need. You know the Bible says that he never sleeps nor slumbers, but I'm going night night. So I got to go. Don't call me any time of night thinking you're going. Well, Pastor, I got in trouble. I'll see that that text message about seven or eight o'clock in the morning, cause I'm, I'm going to bed. But you can call me at any time that's relevant or within a scope. But you know what I'm going to do is I'll give you the word of God and then we're going to pray to God. Amen. So my relationship and your relationship has to be that I'm coming to go deeper with God. Not just checking the box. And a lot of people come to church just to check the box. And, and it's nothing wrong. And, and when I say that, it's nothing wrong in the sense of you're growing and you're getting closer. That's good. So as long as you're hungry, if, if you're getting fed, keep coming. But if not, and you're just kind of doing it, because, you know, y'all, how many of y'all have seen people like that? They're just doing it just because, you know, and, they, they, and you see them other places and they don't, they act nothing. And, and God is, is, is telling me that that's what I have to say. So uh, not trying to offend anybody. I pray I didn't. But God wants us to desire him because when you really get hungry for him, something changes in you. When you have a desire to know God more than just on Sundays and on Tuesdays, Something happens. I mean, he will, he will give you, remember, remember the analogy that I gave a few weeks ago about a sponge? Mm -hmm. A sponge has many holes in it. it has, it's porous. It has holes where whatever it's close to will be absorbed. Mm -hmm. 
any kind of liquid, it'll go right into it. God is saying he wants you to get the power of the spirit on the inside of you. So coming is a great thing. Just make sure you take your sponge and you pour that oil on yourself when you get home. So that they can take you to say, God, I desire more of you. Pastor said something today that was great. Now, God, help me understand it. God, take me to another level so that this thing can really saturate my life and I can be have a deeper relationship with you. That's the whole mission. But let me show you. Let me show you. I only, I only got a couple scriptures today. I don't have much to show. Go to, go to John chapter 6. Let me, let me show you this. John chapter 6. Are y'all with me so far? Is this making sense to anybody? God just wants you. I mean, he, you know what? He didn't create you just to create you, to have something. You know, he was like, he was bored. He said, well, let me create, the, create this one. No, everything about your life has totally been laid out by God. And he has a specific plan for you. And he wants to use you for his glory. And to, for you to have peace and joy and you affect a whole lot of people in this world. Not just, you're not a mistake. You're not a mistake. I'm going to say something that's going to be kind of hard, but it's, it's making a point. And please don't take this the wrong way. Has there been any women in here that's ever had a miscarriage? Some of you have had miscarriages before? My wife and I had, we would have had twins right before Tamara. She miscarried. Now, I don't know why we miscarried or others have miscarried, but every baby that God didn't want born was never born. Mm. It's my point. So if you were born, you made it, and he has a plan for your life. The ones that weren't supposed to make it, the ones that whatever got right there toward the edge didn't make it, they were released. But every child that was born has a purpose, has a plan. So God desires more than just a surface relationship. He wants to go deep. He wants you to understand him and for you to see everything going out that door that he has. Everything, everything, everything. You hear me? All right. I want to show you some people that just was going through the motions with God. John chapter 6. Look at, look at verse, let's start at verse 22. It says, the day following. Well, first of all, let me, let me, let me show you something first. You remember when Jesus fed the 5,000? Okay. At verse 15, I saw something today that I'd never seen before. Do you know this particular verse, from, from verse 15 all the way to 21, you know, Jesus walked on water. He, they got in the boat and went to, to another place. Jesus went up into the mountains. And you know, Jesus walked out on the water to meet them before the experience that he and Peter had. Yeah. Jesus was an awesome guy. How many of y'all, if you decided you needed to go across country, you decided you're going to walk on water? You ain't, I'm not going to ride a boat. I'm just going to walk on water. That's amazing. That's amazing. I want you to see that because I want you to see how powerful and how awesome our God is. And you cannot allow for one moment your faith to feign or to, or, or to diminish when you don't see certain things happen. You can go back to the word and be reminded of how awesome he is. So don't stop for one moment thinking that, oh, he would never, oh, yes, he will. If he can walk on water, if he can walk through doors, if he can do all, he can heal all kinds of major diseases, never give up on, he, on what Jesus can do. And I wanted this to just, to, because the Holy Spirit, when I was reading and I was studying this, I said, Jesus, you're amazing. He's amazing. You may have lost your job, but he said finding another one is not a problem. If I can walk on water, I sure enough can go find you a job or put you in the right place where you need to be. Okay, so now let's go back. I, I just I had to share that with y'all because go back and just mark in your Bibles 15 to 21 and see him walking on water. Just make a note of that and go back and study that. And you'll be amazed. He just he just walked up to him. Because he's amazing. Now, 22, let's go to 22. And it says, the day following, when the people who stood on the other side of the sea saw that there was uh, no other boat there except that one which his disciples were entered. And that Jesus went not with his disciples to the boat, but that his disciples were gone away. 
gone, gone away alone. Nevertheless, there came other boats from Tiberias near to the place where they did eat bread after the Lord had given thanks. So they were in the same region where that he had fed the 5,000. Everybody with me? Okay. And it says, and when the people therefore saw that Jesus was not there, neither his disciples, they took boats and came to Capernaum seeking for Jesus. So basically, they went to an area, they saw his disciples, and usually where Jesus was, his disciples were. So they get there and they're like, hey, where's Jesus at? Where, where's Jesus? So they said, let's get in some boats. Let's go. I believe he's over here. So everybody start kind of, you know, because again, it's the multitude. It's people following. They're just, okay, where's Jesus? At? Everybody's looking around. Where's Jesus? Where's Jesus? You know. So here we go. Verse, verse 25 says, and when they had found him on the other side of the sea, they said unto him, Rabbi, when is, camest thou here? Since he was walking on water, you know, he just did his own thing. Okay. Look at what Jesus said. And Jesus answered them and said, <clears throat> excuse me, verily, verily, or truly, truly, I say unto you, you seek me not because you saw the miracles, but because you did eat the loaves and were filled. Hmm. Wait a minute. Jesus said, you just seek me because I fed you something to eat. Uh -huh. You're not really looking for me because you're looking for me. You want to see what I can do for you next. And see, that's what I'm saying. This, this is when God really parked this in my spirit, y'all. I wanted to, to, I began to teach this in Bible study because, see, I don't want people in this church under my watch to just come to church and just seek God because he's blessing you. See, yeah, we're a ministry that believes in prosperity. We're a ministry where there's many people in here that's blessed and getting blessed on a regular basis. But if you just hung up on the blessing, you might as well quit. If you just hung up on God, just what can God do for me next? And that's it. That's the only reason why you come to church is so you can get blessed in the sense of, OK, you know what he going to do for me? Y'all, that's not the right motives, because Jesus said to these people, he says, why are you here? You just seeking me because I fed you. Come on, y'all. Talk back to me. You just seeking me just because I get I fed 5000 with a two piece fish dinner. Two pieces of fish, five loaves of bread. How in the world can we come to church and just get what God, you know, how many times? Let me say this, because y'all not working with me this morning. Y'all making me work hard. How many times have you seen people that only come around when they want something? How many of y'all got some cousin? You got some children? They just, they just, you know, when things are good for them, you don't hear from them. As soon as they get down and all of their friends are gone, and they don't have no more money. They just barely making it. Or they, their rent is due and they blew up all the money that they had. And they go, they just, hey, cuz. Thank God for caller ID. Thank God for caller I mean, because when I see, because when you done burned me a couple times, you know, when I look at that phone, I say, I see that number. I'm like, I got to go to the bathroom. I put that phone down. I can't answer that right now. You know, but the thing about it is, Jesus said, you only seek me because I fed you. You only seek me because you want something from me. Now look at what it says. Look at the rest of it. It says, Jesus said, let's read it again. Jesus said unto them, and verily, verily, I say unto you, you seek me not because you saw miracles, but because you did eat the loaves and were filled. See, they, he didn't just feed them. They got full. Okay, And it says, labor not for the food which perishes, but for that food which endureth everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you, for him hath God the Father sealed. He said, so make sure when you come into church or you're doing anything for God, you're seeking him because you desire him. You desire what he really, because you know, how many of y'all know if you ate a good meal and you get full, 
okay, well, in a few hours, it's going to be gone. And you're going to be hungry all over again. So then what? But how many of y'all know if you desire God and you allow his spirit to fill you, what he fills you up with, man, you'll never run out of that. That you can get one revelation that, I mean, I remember years ago, I had one particular, actually it was our, our motto, Luke 19.10, uh, and the son of man comes to seek and save that was lost. Do you know God gave me that scripture and I meditated on that scripture for probably about a year? I couldn't get, I mean, I don't care what else I studied, I kept being drawn back to that scripture. You can get one word from God that'll stay with you, and it'll stay with you, and it'll keep you, hung, and you're going like, man, and it'll just keep getting bigger and bigger. But just natural stuff, just going through the motions, God said, come on, man, I'm bigger than the motions. I'm bigger than anything that's temporary. Come on and seek me because I have what you need that can sustain you forever. And so many people come to church and they do things for God and there's there's no substance to it. They just want the quick fix. They want a temporary feel. They want, well, you know what? You know, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a good person. I don't need to come to church. You, in, if in your mind you think that's right, okay, do that. But wait till something really comes and see if your goodness can get you out of trouble. See if all the good things you've done for people is good enough to bail you out of trouble. But a relationship with God and seeking his face and being obedient and following his principles will really get you out of whatever you need. Because now you're walking upright. And he said, I will not withhold any good thing from those who walk upright before me. He said, I won't, I won't withhold nothing. So you won't even have some of the trouble that other folk have because you're walking with God. Hold on. Preach, preacher. Oh, hold it. Preach, preach. He says, seek. Don't, don't, don't follow after those things that's empty. But have a de- uh, desire to have a relationship with God. So now, here's something else I want to give you. And, and I'm about done. I, I got about, oh, maybe 20 minutes and I'm, I'm about finished here. So the multitude began to follow after God because they could get food. But now... I want to show you an example of somebody who really had a heart of gratitude for God. We talked about this in Bible study. Because again, if, if the question is, or the title of the message is, how deep is your love? How, how much do you really love God? And how deep are you, are you going to pursue him? And it should be all around gratitude. See, see if, 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 if we read or we talked about the other message, how deep is your love? If God's love is deep, how in the world can we just kind of blow it off? And just kind of be nonchalant about it when God really loves you. Do you know the Bible says while we were yet sinners, Christ died? When you and I were caught up in things that we didn't understand, God came and rescued us. So it it, it ought to be some gratitude that God came and delivered us out of some of the stuff that we've been in. Some of y'all right now, I got to say this, this is going to be tough. Some of y'all right now, your home life might not be what you want it to be. But if you can give God gratitude and you can give him praise, he'll make some things come together because you're believing him. You're desiring him. And you got to have a heart of gratitude. Paul said, in whatsoever state I'm in, there we're to be content. And a lot of times we, 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 we expect God to do certain things that we don't even do for him. On the minimal level. You expect God to deliver you out of situations and there's certain things that you won't even do for somebody else. And he said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Be a, he said, they will know you by your love and we can't even be loving other people, but we expect God to love us. We expect God to, everything we want, you know, we expect God to, boom, drop the bomb. You know, Aladdin, genie in the bottle, you know, I dream of genie, blink, whatever it is, you're going to go get, God, I need it now. But wait a minute, when somebody else needed it, what did you do? Uh Can't get no help up in here. (laughs) Go to, go to, go to Luke chapter 17. I want to show you something. I want to encourage your hearts. Because I want, I want the people of this ministry not to be those who just seek God for the things that he can do, but for the God that he is. I really want the people of God, those that are part of this ministry, to really desire him. I'm going to tell you guys, I have walked with God ever since I've been a child. I've walked with God all my life. And I have not lived a perfect life. I have not gotten everything right. But I'm going to tell you, I don't regret one day that I've been a Christian. I don't regret one thing, even the hard stuff that I've gone through. 
I don't regret the hard stuff. You know, nobody wants to go through a hard thing. But now I see what God was doing. Now I understand the things that God allowed me to go through that was working out, it's going to work out for my good, and it's made me a better man. See, see, a lot of times, yeah, I got to say this. This is for somebody. Y'all listen to this. Here it comes. When I start snapping, I don't know if something comes in the spirit. I just, it is, it's just a, a Holy Ghost snap. See, see, some of you all, what you're struggling with and you're dealing with, that's the area that he's trying to perfect you in. The area, you, see, if you got a problem with love, or if you got a problem with anger, or if you got a problem with, mm, this is a total different end of the spectrum, managing your money, that's why, he had, that's why he's dealing with you in that area. And it's a struggle. It's, a, it's, it's hard. You're saying, God, well, why do I have to keep going back to this thing? He said, because you haven't gotten it right yet. Come on. All right. How many of y'all, when y'all were in school, if you fail a test, you go back and study and you retake the test? Mm-hmm. Well, if you keep taking the same test, obviously you're not taking, remember last week, taking copious notes so you can get that thing right. You're not really studying the material. You, mm, you're not studying what God is taking you through so that you can get it right and move on to the next assignment. Oh, Lord, that is it. I don't know where to say amen, lights. Ain't nobody saying I'm nothing here. But you know what? You know, I, know, I know the Holy Spirit is, 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 is dealing today. This was not the kind of message that was going to make everybody, you know, oh, praise God. No, God said you need to go in here and deal with this because God is saying, I'm taking you through some tests and some storms that you need to go through because if you don't, he says you can't move on. So that thing that you're dealing with, God's working it. If you, if you keep finding yourself back to the same brick wall, he's saying the wall ain't going nowhere. And he made it high enough where you can't climb over it. And wide enough till you can't go around it. You're going to have to go through the door. But guess what? You know what? Just like he walked on water, when you're ready to pass, he'll open a, he'll make a door and you'll walk right through it. Okay. I just want to show you something. I want you to have an attitude of gratitude. If you're going to have a deep relationship of love with God and you're going to walk with God, don't come to church to check the box. But have a a desire to really thank God for what he's doing in your life and really desire him. Go to Luke 17. Let's read verses. uh, I read this the other day. 11 through 19 or so. Is everybody with me? Okay. Verse 11 says, And it came to pass, as he went to Jerusalem, that he passed through the midst of Samaria in Galilee. And as he entered into the, a certain village, there met him ten men that were what? Lepers. Here go ten, here go some more lepers. We're dealing with that leprosy again. You know, let me say this real quick. Stop right there. And this is something that I meant to bring out early, earlier. Uh, leprosy is always symbolic of sin. Leprosy is a type of sin because it was a disease that really destroyed the person's physical extremities. So whenever you see leprosy, in the spiritual sense, leprosy always represents sin. It's a type of sin in the Bible. Because see, the Bible talks about symbolism or different types and shadows. It's a type of sin, if you will. Now, now that's not to say that everybody had leprosy sinned, but it represents that same thing. Okay? Everybody with me? Okay. So, so here we go. So he's in uh, Galilee, Samaria, Galilee. Verse 12 says, And he entered into a certain village, and there met him ten men who were lepers, who stood afar off. Again, they couldn't come in everybody's presence. So they had to stand back. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Because they had to really broadcast because they, be, they had to be a good distance away. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourselves to the priests. And everybody said, and it came to pass. It came to pass. And everybody said, it came to pass. It came to pass. And as they went, they were what? Now, The first gentleman, he got healed immediately. The ten lepers got healed as they were moving. 
Their healing came as they began to trust God with every step that they took. The Bible said the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Jesus never laid. Remember the first man? What did he do? He put his hand on him. Those guys, number one, it, they were Samaritans. And Samaritans and Jews didn't hang out anyway. Now, Jesus healed Samaritans. He didn't have a problem touching a Samaritan. But by law and by right, he, didn't, he couldn't just go walk up to him initially because it was against the law. And G, how many of y'all know Jesus would break the law? Because he was the God, he's the God of, this, of, of, of the universe. But the thing that I want you to know, in this particular illustration, Jesus didn't have to do anything to him. But what they needed to do was to get busy with their faith and start moving. See, a lot of times things don't happen for us because we sit back on the, the sidelines waiting for God to do everything and we don't do nothing. We're expecting God to do everything for us. We're thinking, well, you know what, I pray. Why well, won't you know what God said? But see, see, people hear hear me. This is one thing that I want y'all to get, and I'm almost done. We think, mm, Lord, this is a problem, and and he just I just saw something in the spirit. This is a we think that we have to impress God like we impress people. We think doing stuff impresses God. You know what impresses God? Doing heart. Doing your heart right. Having your heart and your mind right. See, when they really begin to say, you know what? We're desperate. We want to be healed. And he said, go show yourself to the priest. Now, if they had stood there, they never would have got healed. Amen. That manifestation, that they should have, if they could have said, you know what? This is crazy. I ain't going nowhere. But they all were obedient. And they started moving. And God started healing. God, a lot of times, is waiting for things to happen for you when you start getting busy. He's waiting for you. He, and did you hear what I said? He's waiting for things to happen for you when you start getting busy. See, when you don't get busy, he's not moving. He's waiting on you to take a step. He's waiting on you to get busy and so he can activate some things in your life. But you sit back saying, well, you know what? I, uh, uh, I prayed, uh, I, I fast, I read my Bible. Uh, he said, get up and start moving. Start doing what I told you. Start getting busy. Stop sitting around waiting for things to happen and start making some things happen. Amen. God, I don't know who I need to go talk to today, but guess what? I'm going to go out here and I'm going to start looking. I'm going to start talking and I'm going to believe in my heart that whoever I talk to that I'm supposed to talk to, you're going to connect us up. Hmm. Well. I don't know who I'm talking to. Somebody, you believe in God for a job. And God said, but you believe in me with your mouth. You ain't believing me with your heart. You, you're hoping with your heart. But you got to, you, remember when I told y'all real quick, and, and I'm going to say this, and I'm, I'm trying to wrap this up because I got one more point to show you. Remember I told y'all when I was believing God for a job a few years ago? I started decreeing and declaring that somebody's going to hire me and not even know why. Somebody's going to hire me and not even know why. And I kept saying that out of my mouth. And I kept putting resumes out. And I said, somebody's going to hire me and not even know why. Somebody, and you know what? God is, see, God look. see, you can't argue with results. You can't argue with results. The guy that hired me, he said, I don't normally do this. I'm going to hire you. I don't know why I'm doing it, but I'm going to give you a chance. He said exactly what I had been saying because that's what I was believing in my heart. And things start happening. Things start happening. But I had to keep moving. I had to keep trusting God. And yeah, and see, and, and here, here we go. I don't know who I'm talking to, but I'm going to say it anyway. When you get on the job, as soon as you get there, the enemy's going to try to discourage you and tell you that you made a mistake. But the Bible says the blessings of the Lord make it rich and add no sorrow with it. That's just the devil talking crazy. Sit there and ride that thing out until God turn the tables in your favor. Because if you know it's God and you felt it and you op he went through that door, he opened it, just sit there and wait. Just wait. He's going to send you old crazy boss. He's going to send you crazy people, all of that stuff. But guess what? You know in your spirit that it's the right place for you to be. But as they went, they got healed. So, so let me give you this. Let me give you this so I can wrap this up. It says, as they went. They were cleansed. And verse 15 says, and one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back with a loud voice and did what? 
glorify God, and fell down on his face at his feet, giving what? Thanks to him, and he was a Samaritan. See there? See, Samaritans weren't supposed to go back and, and interact with Jews. But this is what I want to tell you right here. This is what I'm doing, and I'm going to say this, and I'm done. See, this young man had a heart of gratitude. See, he walk, he's walking with the guys. You know, he's just walking along. Then all of a sudden, he looked down and said, the leprosy's gone. It's gone. And all the guys, you know, they started jumping around. Oh, praise God, we heal. But he said, wait a minute. It's more than just we heal. Yeah, we had leprosy. Yeah, we asked God to heal us. And yeah, he did it. But why not go back and thank him for what he did? Why not go back and tell? See, see, that's a heart of gratitude. A lot of times, people, when God does what we, what he, what we ask him to do, a lot of times we don't go back and say, we don't, and, and, see, and see, hear me, hear me, hear me when I say this. Sometimes when we come to church, we thank God. But is it really the kind of thanks from your heart? Or are you just saying thanks because you're in church and it's what you're supposed to do when you're in church? Somebody get me? You, you, you understand? Because how many of y'all know you? there's a church hallelujah and then there's a, there's a real hallelujah. Glo- you see, that's the one when you come down. But there's that, you know, there's the hallelujah. We can, we, can, we can dress it up. We can, you know, we give the. God said, I'm not impressed with your hallelujah. I'm impressed with the one that comes from your heart. Yes. See, this man came back to God because he was he had a heart for God. He was truly grateful. He was truly thankful. Not somebody who just walked around and, you know, I got what I wanted. Now I'm out. I can go. Because, again, they had to, these men, when they had this leprosy, they had to be isolated from their families. They could go back home now because they're healed. They show themselves to the priest. They can go back and be with them. And, and who wouldn't want to be with their family? But is your family more important than God? Why are we doing what we're doing? Why are we coming to church? Is it just to check the box? Is it just to say, hey, I've been good? Or is it we really desire him? So how deep is your love for him? How, how, much, how far are you willing to go to really get to know the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? Some of the people in the Bible study said, you know, and I asked the question, they said, they said well, fear. There was other responses, you know, just to check. But, but you know what? You don't have to be afraid of the loving God. You don't have to question. God loves you. He knows everything there is to know about you. All you got to do is just say, God, here I am. Take me as I am. And you know what? He said, I've been waiting for you to say that, to stretch your arms out and just say, you know what? Come on in here. I love you. I want to teach you my ways. I want you to stop having to go through these things over and over again. But you're going to have to put some extra effort into your relationship with God if you want to have a deeper relationship with God. If your love for him wants to go beyond where it is, you're going to have to, you're going to, have to do more than what you're doing now. Because if you had it where you were, you would, I mean, where you are, you'd be fine. But since you don't, you're going to have to go deeper. How deep is your love for him? Let me, let me read this last part. And I'm closing. It says, Jesus asked the question. And he says, were there not ten cleansed? Question. But where are the nine? Where's everybody else at? Remember, the, see, the, the nine represent the multitude that just followed Jesus because they could get something to eat. The one represents those that are really hungry and thirsty for righteousness. Yeah. See, there's people that, that, that come to church, like I said, just because. You know, I had, a, I had a pastor tell me this. He said this, and I was, as a young pastor, I was devastated when I heard it. He told me this, and, and, and it blew me away. He said to me, he said, as long as y'all are still having church, now this is somebody on the outside told him. He said, as long as y'all are still having church in a storefront, he said, I'm not coming. He said, as soon as you get a building, he said, that's when I'll come to your church. And I was like, see how that stands up in God's eyes. Since you told the man of God that, why don't you tell that to God and see what he say? And God, God probably won't say it. He won't say a word. He'd be like, good. Okay. 
You just keep waiting. But, but do you want to, and I want to have to get on judgment day and have to answer that question? Because the Bible says that we judge ourselves, we'll be not judged. If we don't put those things before God and keep our heart in the right place, y'all, we'll never get to go where God wants us to be. We have to begin to seek him. We have to desire him because we love him. Look at what Jesus said. He said, there, verse 18, there are not found that return to give uh, glory to God except this stranger. And verse 19, he said unto them, unto him, arise, go thy way, thy faith has made thee well or made you whole. Yes. You, you, you see what I'm saying? See, your, your, your desires, your lip service, none of that stuff moves God. But it's your true faith and your desire for a deep relationship with him. It can't be just something that we do to go through the motions, y'all. And I know I got some seasoned saints in here and I got some folk in here that are at different places. But I'm just telling you, don't just come to church. Don't do anything for God just because. Yes. Do it because you love him. I know all the time, Pastor Burton, he teaches on tithing and giving. You don't give your tithe just because God said, give it, just, okay, I'm paying a bill. It's not a bill. You do it as unto the Lord because you love him. Whatever you do for God, you do it from your heart because you love him. And I want more than just a surface relationship with God. And when he does something for me, I'm going to tell people. I'm going to let him know first, but I'm going to let other people know that God has been good to me. God is amazing. God is awesome. But, but it can't be a surface relationship. So, so, so my question to you, how deep is your love? And how far do you want? Because again... As far as you want to go, God can go even further. He's already gone further. But we as Christians, how, how far can we go? How far do you want to go? You may have been saved for 20,000 years. It still won't matter to God. Because you can't, you can't outdo him. You can't love him more than he loves you. I don't care. But you may have been saved a short period of time. Or you might have accepted Christ or started coming to church a short. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. He desires a deep relationship with you. But if you keep it surface, that's all it'll be. And I've said this many times, and I'm closing. As far as you go, that's how far he'll go. If you go, if you go to the edge of the road, you know, God, you know, God said, well, guess what? That's where we'll put our, build our tabernacle is right there. Now, he'll keep loving you way beyond what you did or what you've done to him, but, but he will meet you at the road. Yes. That's where y'all have church at, right there. As far as that, he said, okay, you just come in, that's far you want to go, okay. Or right there in that seat. If that's all you do is come to church, you never read your Bible beyond, you never pray, and it's just right there, that's as far, okay, that's all you get. But when you open that thing up and you say, search me, oh God, or teach me your ways, yes. he'll do it. Put God to the test. Many of us in here struggle with things. And you know what? We're afraid to ask God to fix it. But if you do, he will. If you say, God, show me this. God, help me in this area. He'll do it. Amen. Amen. How deep is your love? If your love is deeper or goes deeper, his love will go deeper for you. Amen. Amen. I pray y'all were blessed today. I pray y'all got something out of this.